Welcome to TLP TV Online, our monthly webisode series, which will provide fans of the Toronto Lakeshore Patriots with an in-depth look at the 2012-2013 season. I'm Tyler Zoltak, joined by one of the play-by-play -play voices of the Toronto Lakeshore Patriots, Toby Kerr, and we'd like to welcome you to our first episode. <laughs> In this episode, we will recap the home opener and have an exclusive interview with Mike Tarantino. But first, let's look back at the game in which the Patriots defeated the Georgetown Raiders 4-3. to three. Oh, Hockey night from the Mastercard Center for Hockey Excellence. Alex Littlefield alongside Toby Kerr for this season of Toronto Lakeshore Patriots hockey. Toby now we splitting the play-by-play -play duties a little bit here, and this game is sure to be a good one as the Patriots take on Georgetown, a team they have not seen all of last season. So it'll be Dutra, Bonner, Deme, Kavachis, and Dolivera, the first power play unit here. Deme back to Dolivera who walks right in and that's blocked in front of that scramble. Bonner can't find it. Kovacic of course is the overtime winner in the first game of the year so far, but he is a first year player so we gotta temper the expectations. He's probably not gonna come right out of the gate like the Haas, but it'd be great if he turned into that kind of a defenseman. Back in 1995, lots of room to grow. He gets the puck now, cycles to Kyle Dutra, can't hold on to it, a chance for a one-timer there as Dolivera will shoot. Three one for that to Deme, he scores! West Deme! Toronto Lakeshore Patriots first goal comes on the power play. Nine minutes into this one. I think the goal there might have been Nathan Ferrick as a matter of fact, but either way, a great initial pass by Kovacic and Dutra couldn't hang on, but the Patriots just kept applying the pressure and that big shot from Dolomir is certainly the threat that allowed them to get the rebound and great position there by Ferrick to put it in. Here come the Toronto Lakeshore Patriots once again. They'll be taken down there by Oh, nice hustle by Doug Bonner as he wins the puck in the corner out for the net! They oh. score! Nathan Barrett with his second goal of the night! And that is just hustle and heart from Doug Bonner. If I'm Mike Tarantino right now, I could not be happier with that goal. A beautiful hustle play by Bonner. Great chemistry between Bonner, Dutra, and Ferrick because they just knew where each other were on the ice. And incredible patience by Ferrick as he just outweighs the goaltender and makes him look silly by sliding it in. Dump down in the corner as Kyle Dutra fights off the defender and he'll go to Doug Bonner in the corner. Looking to gain a little possession here, get a cycle going as Bonner circles around. He's got three Raiders on him, but Dutra comes away with the loose puck. Dutra will wait for everyone to find their open position here. A cycle across, Tyler in shot. It's low and point in front. Well, excellent pass by Dutra. Ends was left for the shot, and he's going to be a factor on the power play this year. He's going to take that shot 100% of the time. And Bonner just quicker than the two Georgetown defensemen who were right there. Bonner just a little quicker, bangs it in. 3 0 Patriots. They are looking good so far. Matches at the point with Dolly Vera. Lots of room out there. Dolly Vera goes towards the center, looking at one of his famous shots through the Kovacis. Loose puck in front of the net. Still loose, it gets by the goal, and the ref is going to call it dead. I believe the net is off its morning. So, Toby, it was an impressive effort against a Georgetown team that we saw finish first overall in the OJHL last year and finish the postseason in a similar manner to the Patriots, losing in the conference finals to the eventual uh, champion, Stouffville, I should mention. But nonetheless, the Patriots came out, played well, and I think one of the big highlights was the two early goals by Nathan Farrick. Really came out, set the tone, big offensive presence, and gave a good effort in that first period. Well, credit to Nathan Farrick, absolutely, but also credit to his line mates, Doug Bonner and Kyle Dutra. And Kyle Dutra, of course, the captain, really led by example. 
he really stepped up his game, not only offensively, but also physically, really using his big body there to generate a lot of plays in the offensive and defensive zones. And speaking of a big body player, Toby, I take a second time about Brody Heleno. And, you know, I think this year Brody's really going to have an increased role with the team on the defensive end, obviously. We saw last year he had that enforcer style of play and kind of limited playing time. But I think this year he can really be a steady hand on that back end for the Patriots and guide these defensemen to some good things. Well, they're certainly going to need a veteran presence on the blue line. Lots of new defensemen for the Patriots this year. And one of those new defensemen is Nico Kovacic. And Kovacic has really impressed me in these first two games, getting a lot of power play time and probably a replacement sort of for De Haas last year. That style of player, big body, big shot, they're going to be expecting a lot from him and certainly relying on him. And this kid is going to be a lot of fun to watch this year. Alex Bloomfield took a second to talk with Nathan Farrick and Kyle Dutra after the home opener. Let's take a look. Nathan, you spent last season in St. Mike's. Have you spent some time adjusting to this Olympic ice surface from that small rink up at St. Mike's? Yeah, it's taken a while. Um, the ice is definitely bigger, but uh, it's just a lot more speed, less checking, and more like using your wheels to go around the D. Couple big goals are there for you tonight. Uh, any thoughts on those? I uh, was just there, right, right place, right time, just banging on the rebounds. Anything uh, different you guys are doing on the power play? A couple of those are on the power play goals there. Is any any changes even from St. Mike's system that you see here in the Tarantino? Uh, yeah, we just need to get more shots, really. Um, St. Mike's, we got a lot of shots and just sat there and banged them in. So here we just need to focus on getting more shots in that. And just all of our goals are in the blue paint. So uh, just keep banging them in from there. Kyle, so your second season as being part of the captaincy is. Uh, Anything changed you over this uh, this off season? Really, be taking over a leadership more of a leadership role? I just want to be a le great leader out there, lead by example, blocking shots, working hard. So uh, I just want to keep keep doing that, and, and the boys will follow by example. So you're playing, uh, spending some time shorthanded and on the power play tonight. Is there any changes in those systems from last season with Tarantino? No, absolutely not. Last year we were successful both on the penalty kill and power play, so we want to continue with that this year, with, even with a new group of guys. And now playing against Robbie Merton and Nick Perruccio, is uh, that a bit interesting out there? Well, it's definitely a bit interesting. Off the ice, we're uh, good friends, but on the ice, uh, they're just another player on Georgetown. So, And I'm sure everyone wants to know, uh, what's the story behind the bucket on your head there? After every home game, uh, the boys decide who, who, were, who worked the hardest out there and who led by example. So uh, they, they were generous enough to give it to me today. So, oh, well, Great game out there, Kyle. I think you deserve that bucket there. So uh, look forward to uh, you the rest of the season here. I'm here with the Patriots coach and general manager, Mike Tarantino. Your third season of the club, Mike. Uh, what are you excited most about this season coming in? Well, I think we got a, a lot of good kids returning, and uh, we've brought in uh, a lot of good hockey players from you know other parts of uh, the GTA. Some played down the U.S. Uh, last year, and some uh, came out of minor hockey. So overall, I'm, I'm real happy with the with the the quality of players we have, and then more importantly, the the type of players in terms of character and work ethic. And definitely a big hole coming in would have been the defense because only two guys coming back from last year. Um, how do you see the defense playing out this year with uh, maybe five new guys in there? Yeah. Well, that's a good, a good point there. But I think uh, a couple of the guys we brought over from other teams, so they do have some junior A experience uh, uh, like, uh, like a Prada and then a couple of minor hockey guys as well that um, did play well in midget, uh, Tyler Curry and uh, Nico Kovacs. So um, overall, you know, I'm, I'm pretty happy with, uh, with our, our defense score. Joseph Pianta is certainly a solid contributor last year. He's back this year. Stormer Santana make an early push here. Um, do you think, how do you see the goaltending situation playing out? Well, it's a good, uh, good question, but I think, um, you know, really I've challenged both of them. Uh, Stormer, I didn't know much about, so I, I'm giving him an opportunity early on to kind of prove himself. Uh, Joseph, obviously, was the, the starter the last two years. So, you know, they're going to compete for that. Uh, I, I know what Joseph can do. I want to see what Stormer can do. Um, and I think you need two goalies to go deep uh, in, any, in any season, in any league. Now, with a couple guys like Robbie Murden and James Ryan not coming back from last year, there's a couple of big holes to fill. Um, do guys like Valascuro, Seligman, are they the ones that are filling those? Yeah, and I think, uh, you know, Nathan Farrick and uh, Kevin Biatrabon uh, as well. Um, you know, they're, they're offensive players. Uh, they can play in the middle or on the wing. Um, so, yeah, I would say those guys could uh, fill in for for those players uh, you know, that have moved on or, or to university or you know, to other teams. 
And uh, there's a couple changes as well in the OJHL alignment. How do you feel about the conference switch up and the new playoff format as well? Well, I mean, the conference switch up, it looks like they did everything uh, Toronto West and then Toronto East. So, uh, you know, it's interesting for us. We get to play some clubs like we uh, that we don't get to play or never have played before in, in Georgetown, Oakville, Milton, Burlington, Hamilton, out that way. Um, I, I like the new, I like the playoff format with, uh, you know, top eight in each conference and then best out of sevens and none of that interplay, uh, you know. Uh, I don't even call it, know what to call it, but the, uh, you know, the best, best out of fives and stuff. So, you know, three best out of uh, sevens to win your division and then to get to the Buckland Cup and then win one more. I mean, it's just like the NHL, I guess, so. All right, Mike. Well, hopefully you guys end up in the Buckling Cup, and uh, good luck this season, and we'll talk to you soon. All right. Thank you very much. So, Toby, it seems that head coach Mike Carantino has quite a bit of optimism uh, looking at this roster that he's put together, and uh, with good reasons that he'd have such a great outlook, and I look forward to seeing what this team can do over the rest of the season. As I'm sure we all do. And that's it for us, I'm afraid, at TLP TV for this month, but tune in next month for further recaps, highlights, and interviews. I'm Toby Kerr. For Tyler Zoltek and Alex Bloomfield, see you next month.